And we start off with an AI boom for the markets. Wall Street piling into the trade, helping the tech-heavy Nasdaq gain 2.5% this week. It's fifth straight week of gains. NVIDIA's blowout earnings and guidance and Marvell's forecast for quote-unquote tremendous potential in AI, adding fuel to this fire. But there's an unusual dynamic under the surface. Retail traders appear to be sitting on the sidelines even as the stocks are rallying. Individual investor flows into AI-sensitive names have been muted, according to research firm Vandatrack. So why isn't the AI hype driving traders back into the market? Or maybe they will go into the market and fuel another leg higher. Grasso, what do you think? So I think the, the retail investors normally like cheaper stocks. They like lower price stocks. They could buy more mm -hmm. of, of that stock. And if you look at during the meme era of stocks, they were buying a lot of cheap stocks, a lot of heavily shorted stocks. You can't say that now. NVIDIA, no short interest. NVIDIA, over $300. So I guess if you look at C3 AI, that's as close to it as you can come. Look at the chart on that one. That looks to me like retail investors have been buying it, selling it, buying it back. Cheaper stock than NVIDIA. It has, it's, and its name is AI, right? So that one probably tests that, that premise right off the bat. Yeah, and it's ticker's AI. How much is that ticker worth today? <laughs> Banu, what, what do you make of this trend? And do you think you know, it's just a matter of time before retail starts getting in? I mean, the point in the note was also that it was banks doing a lot of the flow, inflows into some of these names. Yeah, I think Steve makes a, good, a, lot, makes a lot of good points, and I agree with some of them. I, I, I'm kind of looking at the same thing, but from a slightly different lens. So let's take a look at some of the names that were, that were heavily involved in by the retail, right? Tesla, AMC, GameStop, and then Bitcoin. Tesla's down 50% from its 21 peak from 407 to 197. AMC down from 3640 to 474. GameStop from 81 to 2373. And Bitcoin from 64,000 so to just shy of 20. So, I mean, if you look at, the, look at the carnage, what do you think that does to the psyche of a retail investor? I mean, it, a professional investor would be would be taking pain and would likely have his uh, risk manager tapping him on the shoulder right now. So I do think there's a, there's a certain uh, psychological aspect. And then you look at like the housing boom that happened throughout that same period. That offers an alternative to where you would be investing those dollars. So you've been burned in this high vol volatility situation. You're now able to park your money in a more stable asset and get similar appreciation. And the last thing is just with the re reopening of the economy and return to offices, we can argue the extent thereof, you just don't have as much time to fixate over how you're going to be trading your portfolio around. So I think those three dynamics together make it, you know, a bit more challenging for the retail investor to, to participate. Are you surprised by this guy? I'd agree with what Steve said and Bonowitz said. I think that's exactly right. At Steve's point about these stocks are expensive on in terms mm -hmm. of a price level makes a lot of sense. And Bonowitz's point about these folks getting burned, look at AMC, look at what GameStop is. Bitcoin is a great example. On top of which, I don't think people have the time necessarily that they had in the peak of COVID when a lot of people might have been home working clearly but had more time on their hands to actually trade stocks. So I think it's a function of all those things. I don't know if it's a tell necessarily on the market or where we're going, but I think it's important to bring up. And I think to a certain extent, I think we've explained a lot of the reasons why they're not there. Yeah, but maybe the tell really is the inflation in these prices. And I don't mean to cast aspersion on, on the term you, by using that term. Inflation meaning just... <clears throat> The, you know, the stock's going up by so much, Tim. I mean, what does that say about the markets and how, con how quickly this happened? I mean, these are just jaw-dropping gains in just a couple of trading days. Well, and, and I, I'll disagree with all the guys just to be that guy today. I, I think the retail investor is here. I mean, look, I, I think the retail investor never ran very far. If we look at more of the broader flows from retail investors, especially during some of the peaks uh, of market call it volatility and whatnot, the retail investors actually hung in there. Uh, I look at Microsoft and Apple within 2% of all-time highs. Uh, I look at semiconductors breaking out to all-time highs, and I think that was, obviously, we know what NVIDIA did this week, but, but look at semiconductors uh, more broadly as a group, if you're using the SMH. You can see that actually not only do we break through that December uh, 2021 relative high to the S&P, which is, I think, a very important 
uh, point for the market here. Semis are leading the way, but back to the retail investor. The retail investor through difficult times, and we talked about this also uh, at various times, where almost your Microsoft, Apple's, uh, Amazon's, Netflix at 52-week highs were almost seen as the money market stocks for the retail investors. So retail flows overall actually belie the, 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 the view and the theory that the retail investor is not getting involved in this market. And if anything, the institutional positioning and the sentiment we get from Bank of America and all the other folks that measure where the professional community is, say they are the ones that are most nervous and most underweight this market right now. Yeah, and, and maybe, maybe also the, the fact that NVIDIA had such high short interest going into the year um, you know, really tells you sort of that the institutional investor might have really questioned this and not traded this one particularly well. well. When Nvidia, when you look at them, they started off as a gaming chip stock, and they were they were doing just under under two billion dollars in revenues from that. Then it became a data center mm -hmm. story, and they were doing double that amount. Now it's become an AI story, which in conjunction will use the data centers and the gaming chips. So now everything is clicking all at once. But these valuations have blown out to what we considered extended. Now are tremendous, enormous, use any word that you want on it, but it's very hard to figure out where you should be a buyer of these names. Sometimes you just have to hold your nose because expensive stocks have a way of getting more expensive. Cheap value stocks get even cheaper. But I think part of this is just the, the radical change in the perception of NVIDIA and a lot of these chip stocks in just the past couple of months. I mean, remember in March, NVIDIA was announcing a 4% cut to its workforce. I mean, things are yeah. viewed mm -hmm. completely different differently just a couple of months ago, Guy, and here we are talking about NVIDIA and talking about AI basically saving the market. I mean, take a look at the, the massive gains in the mega cap tech stocks thanks to AI. Yeah, no question. It's saving the market for now, for sure. But I think as Carter's going to say in a couple minutes, is it's setting the market up for something else. And NVIDIA, you go back a couple quarters, and you know they weren't saying particularly great things. And then the AI uh, realization came, and they really hammered that home. They did a remarkable job, a masterful job, of sort of focusing on that when some of their other businesses were not doing as well. Now, those businesses are catching up to a point. But again, to see, you know, valuation right now, at a trillion dollars effectively, I'm rounding up clearly. It's you know, Even if the most ambitious people out there in terms of revenue, you're talking about a stock that's probably trading 25 times revenue. That's historic mm -hmm. um, for, a ch for a chip stock, especially with a chip stock with that market cap, which we've never seen before. Yeah, I mean, a, a trillion dollar valuation on 27 b billion in revenue. I mean, listen, there's no argument against the fact that the valuation is stretched. I don't really think that's what it is. What I think to me, at least, is that NVIDIA is kind of viewed as this tangential play as opposed to a pure play, which inherently will have more risk to live and die on this AI theme, so to speak. So NVIDIA still has this use case well within gaming. You saw the same type of dynamic happening with the whole Web3 move, right? Meta came out and announced it. The, the logic was that, listen, you're going to need these, these processing, this processing ability that NVIDIA clearly has a leadership position in in order to kind of make this move. And I think it's the same situation with AI, where there's still an underlying operating business that supports a, at least some type of cash flows there. And then you have the upside with the AI adjacent, as opposed to chasing a name that is going to live or die on its ability to deliver on the AI front. But all that said, do you like NVIDIA here? I do. I mean, although I, I have trimmed some, I mean, but that's just about freedom risk management. But in terms of... Did I get out? No, I'm still in. Okay.